Coming up on show 529, Tesla both lowers and raises prices. Well, those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, Monday 15th of July edition today. My name is Martin Lee, been through all of Monday's news, and this is what happened. Well, thank you as always to myev.com for helping make this show. They are building the world's first ever place where you can buy and sell and learn about only EVs. None of your fossil gobblers on this website, no, myev.com, is purely about EVs. And if you're in the USA, you are lucky enough to have that as a resource you lucky little sausage well thank you very much to a new executive producer of the show we have a new exec in our ranks ladies and gentlemen uh, put your hands together give a big welcome to jeff helinski thank you very much jeff jeff with a j by the way you know not that you asked but i thought i'd fill in some details uh, thank you very much jeff for being a new exec producer of this show so late on monday tesla changed their prices of pretty much everything and by everything I mean the models the features the colors let me run you through everything Tesla has dropped the standard range variants of its S and X cars from its product lineup and adjusted prices across the range in a sales push that comes only days after the US EV maker reported record delivery says Reuters today well from Tesla themselves I have a statement and they said this to make purchasing our vehicles even simpler we're standardizing our global vehicle lineup and streamlining the number of trim packages is offered for Model S, Model 3, and Model X. They didn't put it in that order, but I'll do it in sex order. Uh, we are also adjusting our pricing in order to continue to improve affordability for customers. Well, here are the headlines that you need to know. The big thing, I guess, that affects pretty much everybody, regardless of what car you buy or are thinking of buying or one day would like to buy a Tesla, pearl white multi-coat is now standard color. As per an Elon tweet a few weeks ago now, when he said white would be standard, he didn't say pearl white multi-coat, but it is, uh, from your choice of five colors now. There is no standard white. Ludicrous pack is now standard on S and X. Ludicrous pack was previously a $20,000 software option, but that fee was waived for existing owners who were getting into the new Raven spec S and X, but that is now standard. Ludicrous is now standard on the performance cars. Solid black, which was formerly included if you are looking at paint colors, that is now a $1,000 option. So yesterday, black was included. Today, black is $1,000 or £950. I'll try and do most of these prices in dollars and pounds. I know that I, Canadian dollars, Aussie dollars, Euro, euros. I'll try and just do a couple US dollars and UK pounds to try and keep this from being too, too much of a stato fest. Right, Model 3. Model 3 Standard Range Plus. This is the car that most people will end their entry into the Model 3 lineup. The Standard Range Plus is now down in price. $38,990. $38,990 or $36,490. I'll come back to the UK pricing. There's a, there's a bit of an asterisk next to this. $36,490. The Model 3 Long Range Rear Wheel Drive, if you love that, you could order it off menu and get all of those miles. That's now discontinued. The jump from the Model 3 Long Range to the Model 3 Performance is now, I think, I mean, not negligible because it's still an amount of money, uh, but in the UK it's £3,650. It, you go from 45490 to 49140 so that's a difference of th three and a half grand. You know what? To get the performance car from the long range car, you sh I think. I most people will do that, I would think. Uh, in terms of the other paint options, by the way, silver and blue, I mentioned there were five colours. I've mentioned the included white. Silver and blue, $1,500 or £1,450. Red multi-coat is still the range topper, if you like, two and a half grand, and actually two and a half thousand dollars. So the same in dollars and pounds when I checked earlier. Maybe that's a mistake, or maybe that's just the exchange rate is not particularly in our favor at the moment. Uh, the standard range model S and X are discontinued, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show. You can now choose long range, or you can choose performance. You can't have standard range. This is where it's got more expensive for people to get into an S or into an X. To get yourself into those cars is a bigger jump now. Starting prices of the Model S, 79990 or 77000 pounds. Model S performance is 99990 so $10 off 100 grand or 91000 pounds. Starting prices for the Model X 
$84,990. If you want a six-seater, it's six grand. If you want the seven-seater, it's three grand extra. Uh, the Model X Performance, by the way, if you are range-topping, Model X Performance, $105,000, £96,000. Full self-driving, $6,000 or £5,800. There is an added consideration, this little asterisk that I put at, at, uh, earlier on, in the UK. See, here in this country, any car that costs more than £40,000, the list price of more than £40,000, once you add all your extras in and the delivery costs, if it's more than £40,000, you attract something called the premium car tax. This is something that you have to pay from years two to six while you own the vehicle. And if you sell the vehicle on, they have to pay that from years two to six. It is £340 a year. And it's only for cars over 40 grand. Tesla just reduced the cost of the Model 3 to 39,990. So you look at that and go, wow, within, you know, they've, they've done it 10 pounds under. But it's not because you have to include delivery. And so you add 840 pounds and it pushes it over. Is this going to put people off buying the car? I don't think so. But if it's put you off, let me know. I don't think that if you're in the market for a Tesla, the idea of paying your premium car tax of 340 pounds years two to six as an annual fee, would it put you off buying the car in the first place? I don't think so, but let me know. From a user called Smithy on the forums, he says, I just spoke to Tesla. They're adjusting prices for existing orders that are affected by the price changes. So if you have an order in and it's on the boat, uh, the ship rather, and it is en route right now, they are adjusting the prices. A revised order agreement is going to show up in your Tesla account. Confirmed the price for Pearl White Standard Range Plus will be updated to today's pricing if you ordered that, so you save some money. Very happy with that. Uh, was intending to cancel and reorder, says Smith but glad I don't have to. Okay, that's your big Tesla news today and all the different prices. Go check it out and have a little play in the configurator, uh, uh, the design studio, whatever you want to call it. Right, let's talk about some big news coming out of this country. The government just announced a public consultation for new plans that could see all new build homes fitted as standard with an EV charger. That's according to the website Infrastructure Intelligence. The proposals aim to support and encourage the growing uptake of EVs here in this country in the UK by ensuring that all new homes with a dedicated car parking space. So if you're building a new home, it has a parking space with the home, either a garage, a driveway, or underground parking if it's a flat or apartment, does come with the uh, opportunity to have your electric car charger. Uh, that makes charging easier, cheaper, more convenient for drivers. That legislation, as far as I know, would be a world first. If you know differently to me, and I do spend a fair bit of my life in the EV world, if that legislation is passed, that any new build that comes with an assigned parking space has to have EV charging, I think that is a world first piece of legislation if it comes off. I'll pop a link in the show notes for you to read more. Well, Fiat or Fiat Chrysler, FCA, is the parent company, announced it's setting up the assembly line to make the Fiat 500 electric at its plant in Turin. It'll have an annual capacity of 80,000 units, according to Pedro at Push EVs. Around 1,200 people will be dedicated to the production of the Fiat 500 electric car. New assembly line will have an ultimate annual capacity of 80,000 units. The platform being installed at the plant is specific to EVs only, and the first application will be the Fiat 500 BEV. Today, the first robot was installed, and the rest of the plant's going to be retooled over the next couple of months. In the body shop alone, there'll be 200 robots doing fully automated welding. Production of the first pre-production models of the 500 uh, electric is going to be by the end of this year. Uh, so 1,200 people will be dedicated to making that electric car. The new assembly line will have that potential for expansion as well. 80,000 of these could be made per year. That seems like a big number. So... Good luck to everyone at FCA uh, doing that work, and you could argue, you could argue that um, you could argue that that is, uh, you know, that is a good thing that they're doing. But should there be a a more ambitious plan from FCA? It's always hard when you get a good bit of news and then throw cold water on it. It's kind of weird. I feel bad doing that, but it's good. I think it's good news. Right, let's talk buses. Oh, love a bit of bus news, me. Electric bus news. Hundreds of electric buses per year will be ordered by Moscow at Kamats. K-A-M-A-Z. Kamats has caught the wave and is building a plant for 500 EV buses per year, says Inside EVs. According to this news, the Russian capital intends to purchase 300 EV buses every year, this year and next year. The first 200 ordered in spring last year, uh, followed by another 100 in April earlier this year. The volume is pretty high. 
above what most cities in the area are doing, in fact, in Western Europe as well. From 2021, Moscow would like to purchase only electric buses. Great news. Let's talk lithium iron recycling, because you sometimes see this from the Fudsters, the EV doubters online. While it's often stated that only 5% of lithium iron batteries are recycled, a new review of research into the second life and recycling of lithium iron batteries suggests that's a gross misunderstatement uh, and a misunderstanding of the numbers. That 5% number comes from a 2010 study, I believe, by Friends of the Earth. It's so outdated now. A new study found that almost 100,000 thousand tons of waste batteries were recycled last year, about half of what reached end of life, says PV Magazine. While dissemination of unreliable or obsolete data is possible because no official stats that I know of are available for up-to-date lithium iron recycling on a worldwide scale. The London-based research and consulting group Circular Energy Storage has collected information from 50 global lithium iron recycling companies and found as much as 97,000 tons were recycled last year alone, 67,000 in in China, 18,000 in South Korea as well. Another brand could be going all electric. Mini could make the jump to being an all electric, fully electric car brand. Senior bosses told Auto Express in an article written by Jonathan Byrne today. Well, Peter Schwarzenbauer is the member of the board of management at BMW responsible for the Mini brand. And he told Auto Express legislation in major cities all around the world is increasing consumer interest in EVs. And they could make Mini an all-electric brand. And finally, Daimler has some news that came out on Friday last week, which I had uh, just not had time to put in the podcast until today. Daimler has warned its investors of an expected second quarter loss. This isn't really EV news. This is just some massive news affecting one of the world's biggest car makers. An increase in provisions for an extended recall. Uh, take this into account, partly to blame an airbag recall. According to Automotive News Europe, the automaker warned investors a second quarter loss before interest and taxes of, brace yourself, hold on to your seats, one6 billion euros. Yes, with a B. That's 1.8 billion US dollars equivalent. That is after a 2.6 billion profit was posted in the year, uh, in the earlier period. The automaker took a hit following a reassessment made in connection with ongoing governmental and court proceedings and measures relating to Mercedes-Benz diesel vehicles. Yes, diesel is the gift that keeps on giving for these auto companies. 1.6 billion euro hit, all thanks to more fallout from diesel. All right, let's get on to our question of the week this week. Thanks to myev.com for setting this. Should all charging networks be open to everyone? Or should they have walled gardens? Should Tesla build their own? Should BMW build their own? Uh, should the car makers have their own networks? Should people like Ionity, who are building a network out, keep it exclusively for the car companies that are funding them? Or should all EV charging networks be open to everyone? Let me know your thoughts. You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Well, thank you very much to 235 patrons of the show. We add Jeff's name, of course, to the exec producer list. Jeff, you big star. If you want to get in on the act, you can check out what the fuss is all about at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash EV News Daily, funnily enough. And thank you very much to all of the producers of this show, particularly our premium partners of this podcast who do keep me going. Uh, that would be you, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby continues to support, and Avid Technology, the third and latest name that we add to that list. See if you want to get any of the... Oh, hang on. No, no, no. Where's the music? Time for the endy bit. Well, there are 527 previous podcasts, uh, which you can download. No, it's 528 of them. I'm losing count. Uh, if you want to, you can get a, a, a heads up on all the new ones by hitting subscribe. Maybe that's on YouTube. Maybe that's on your favorite podcast platform. If that includes Spotify, a bit of a wobble. For some reason, not discoverable on Spotify at the moment. Raise the ticket. I'm sure they'll fix it. Sorry about that. Uh, but in the meantime, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeart, the blog, Patreon. Uh, the blog is evnewsdaily.com. Loads of alternatives. But I know lots of people do use Spotify, so we are sorting that. Uh, you get your new ones first and free and automatically if you subscribe for free. In the meantime, come and say hi on socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.